Um, Congressman, thanks for joining us, Mr. Chairman. I want to start on the news this morning. The Israeli military you, says it has withdrawn some ground forces from Khan Yunus in southern Gaza, though a significant force remains in other parts of Gaza. How significant is this move? Well, I think uh, you're, you're certainly seeing um, some efforts to respond to the White House's um, vocal criticism of the operations of, of Israel in, in Gaza. You know, as you indicated, uh, Jake, this is the sixth month demarcation of the um, horrific attack that occurred October 7th and then the subsequent declaration by Israel that they would enter Gaza for the purposes of eliminating Hamas today. Uh, the Palestinians in Gaza remain hostages to Hamas, and Hamas has not been eliminated. Uh, we've seen, I think, an overconfidence of Israel uh, both on its intelligence, both when uh, it failed to see October 7th and when it went into Gaza to eliminate Hamas. That has been, I think, part of the the outcome that we've seen of the both haphazardous and dangerous military operations that resulted in um, unacceptable civilian deaths and certainly uh, the, cri the uh, food crisis that you described. This comes as more negotiations for a ceasefire and release of the hostages are beginning. Does this move by Israel to withdraw some, some troops from Gaza, does it make you more optimistic, the news that Israel is sending a delegation to Cairo? Um, and uh, what's your position on the urgency of a ceasefire with the return of hostages? Well, the, the CIA director, Director Burns, has done an excellent job in, in shuttle diplomacy and trying to bring all of the parties together to get uh, the um, the hostages released and to get a, a ceasefire. You know, quite frankly, it seems that almost President Biden has been asleep at the at the wheel as he has not responded to the crisis as it's unfolded, and now making public statements criticizing Netanyahu, criticizing Israel. Uh, when this has been been going on for some time, Director Burns has has tried uh, desperately to get a ceasefire and to get the hostages released. Um, I think he's done an excellent job. Certainly the last ceasefire and hostage just that were released were a result of his efforts. Um, I think, um, you know, I, I put a great deal of faith in the work that he's doing, and I'm certainly hopeful that that will result in both hostages released and a ceasefire so additional humanitarian aid can get to the Palestinians. Meanwhile, the U.S. is actively preparing for Iran uh, to strike uh, after Israel killed uh, high-ranking Iranian military officials uh, who were, were at a diplomatic facility in Damascus, Syria. Can you be any more specific about the nature of the threat from Iran? Are Americans in danger? Well, I think uh, Americans in the area remain uh, in danger. Remember, uh, Iranian proxies have continued to attack U.S. troops in the area, again, with the Biden administration being slow to respond and ultimately responding to those attacks. And, of course, the United States has moved additional capabilities and assets in the area to deter Iran from entering into uh, this conflict directly with Israel, although their proxies, Hamas, which the conflict is is directly with, and Hezbollah um, continues to be a threat to Israel uh, in Lebanon. <clears throat> but I, I think <clears throat> what we're seeing here is <clears throat> certainly <clears throat> the, the consulate in Syria was a legitimate target from uh, for Israel because Iran certainly is the source of which all this is coming. At the same time, it, it still is very unwise as we were as we were trying to put pressure on Iran to keep them out of this conflict, both with U.S. presence and with uh, our response to the attacks on our own troops. This certainly does escalate the issue throughout the entire region. Let's turn to Ukraine, uh, an issue that's important to you uh, and your fellow Republican chairman. Uh, Michael McCall, who runs the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, Congressman McCall made a comment this week about um, what he says sounds like Russian propaganda from, from some conservative media uh, and why it's so difficult to explain to Republican voters why supporting Ukraine is important. He told Julia Yaffe, quote, I think Russian propaganda has made its way into the United States, unfortunately, and it's infected a good chunk of my party's base. He singled out primetime shows on conservative channels. Do you agree with him? And, and how big is this problem? Oh, it, it is absolutely true. We see directly coming from Russia uh, attempts to mask communications that are anti-Ukraine and pro-Russia messages, some of which we even hear being uttered on the House floor. I mean, there are members of Congress today who still incorrectly say that this conflict between Russia and Ukraine is over NATO, which, of course, it is not. Uh, Vladimir Putin having made it very clear, both publicly and to his own population, that his, his uh, view is that this is a conflict of, of a much broader claim of Russia uh, to Eastern Europe, and including claiming all of Ukraine territory as, as Russia's. Now, to the extent that this propaganda takes hold, 
it makes it more difficult for us to really see this as an authoritarian versus democracy battle, which is what it is. President Xi of China, um, Vladimir Putin himself have identified it as such. We need to stand up for democracy. We need to make certain that, that we know uh, that authoritarian regimes never stop when they, when they start in aggression. Um, Ukraine needs our help and assistance now, and this is a very critical time for the U.S. Congress to step up and provide that aid. Speaker Johnson's uh, leadership is in trouble if he puts a bill funding uh, Ukraine, providing aid to Ukraine on the floor, according to Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, your colleague from Georgia, who's already threatened a motion to va vacate. Um, how worried should Speaker Johnson be? I don't think he's at any risk. I think that that what you know what people have been referring to as the chaos caucus, those individuals who are seeking attention for themselves and trying to stop all of the important work in, in Congress, uh, are now seen as merely disruptive. Um, Hakeem Jeffries, minority leader on the Democratic side, has made it clear uh, that the Democrats will not join with efforts to unseat Johnson. As we, this year, approaching the election, undertake the most important work of Congress, uh, which of course is uh, you know, making certain we fund the government, make certain that these uh, national security packages pass, and of course, um, that our Foreign Surveillance uh, Reauthorization Act passes. Yeah, let's talk about that, because Speaker Johnson announced this weekend that the House is going to vote on that for, for uh, surveillance bill uh, the, to reform and extend authority for spy agencies uh, for them to be able to conduct surveillance of foreign intelligence on domestic soil. It's, it's known as FISA. Uh, there have been abuses in the past. I, I know this has been a contentious issue between you and House Judiciary Committee Chairman uh, Jim Jordan, who have different views on this. Are you going to vote for this latest version of the FISA bill, and do you think it will have the votes to pass? Absolutely. You know, I was, uh, the Intelligence Committee was instrumental in drafting the bill that's going to the House floor. And, and Jake, I appreciate you, you raising this issue because the, this is um, surveillance, surveillance of foreigners who are abroad. Uh, they are, we're not surveilling foreigners in the United States. We're not uh, surveilling um, Americans in the United States. Those individuals who say that this is a warrantless search of Americans' data are just not telling the truth. These are foreigners abroad. They're a select group of individuals who are a national security threat. If you're an American and you're corresponding with ISIS, yes, if we're, uh, if we're spying on ISIS, your communications are going to be captured. You would want us to do that. All Americans would want us to try to, to make certain that we keep ourselves safe from these terrorist, outside terrorist groups and organizations. Uh, we are not spying on Americans. This is not a warrantless surveillance program. This is foreigners who are abroad only, and this needs to pass. And do you think it has the votes? It will? I think it does. I think it will. I think that the, those who mischaracterize this um, are small compared to those who understand that this goes to the heart of our ability to get intelligence that allows us to be able to keep Americans safe. Uh, this is not a warrantless uh, surveillance of Americans. All right. Uh, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate your time.